Right guys, we have some updates regarding the features of Apple's VR headsets, and so let's delve into it. Right, so German in this new report delves into some recent job listings that could point towards the features and use cases we could see for Apple's upcoming headsets. So to recap some of the key specs, this will be a high-end headset costing around $3,000, and we could see a chip inside this similar to the M2 and the Max, more than 10 cameras placed outside and inside the device, and also high resolution displays, there should be three of them, and I believe these panels are going to be 8K resolution, so yes, this headset's definitely going to have the best specs on the market. Now, German previously has told us some of the main use cases for this headset are going to be gaming, messaging, and of course, watching TV shows and movies. And that is basically what's suggested with these recent job listings that Apple has that, of course, could be related to this headset. So, for example, they're looking for a software producer with experience in visual effects and game asset pipelines so they can create digital content that's optimized for AR and VR. And this ties in perfectly with a previous report suggesting that Jon Favreau is developing a documentary that's going to be optimized for a VR experience. And Apple did purchase the company Next VR in 2020 that of course specializes in sport leagues and artists to transfer their content into the VR format. And so yeah, basically all this means we should see a video service featuring 3D content that's going to be specialized for this headset. And maybe there will be an API that converts regular content into the VR slash AR format. I think that would be great, and it would help developers of other streaming services get on board for Apple's headsets. And in fact, I could see a VR version of SharePlay for the headset, where you can have a virtual cinema and watch movies with your friends. The MetaQuest can do that right now, but of course, with Apple's tech, this experience should be more immersive. Now moving on to the next job listing German found, this one's pretty interesting because this specifically calls out the development of a 3D mixed reality world, essentially what the metaverse is to Facebook, and that's interesting because Greg Joswiak has recently said he's never going to use the word metaverse, and Tim Cook has also said that he's not a fan of consumers being attached to their phones 24-7, so of course, creating a virtual world where people could spend hours and days within, yeah, that seems to go against his views. And so maybe there will be only specific use cases for this world. For example, we have heard a use case for this headset is going to be for communications, and maybe there's going to be a VR version of FaceTime so maybe that is going to be the purpose of this world, to communicate with friends, but not to be sucked within it and spend hours with this headset. Now, by the way, the OS this headset's going to run is going to be called Reality OS. The code name is Oak, and it will still include the core Apple apps like Messages, FaceTime, and Maps. Now, Maps on this headset's pretty interesting because this will be used at home for the most part, so we don't need maps on this, but I guess Apple's gonna use the Maps app to flex the VR slash AR skills of this headset. Now, as for the name of the headset, it should either be Reality One or Reality Pro because Apple has trademarked these names, and I guess they're deciding which one to choose. Now, regarding the release, Quo has told us we should see a Jan event for this, but much like Apple's other big announcements, don't expect the release to be immediately after the event. It will probably release a few months after the announcement. Anyways, let's delve into your questions. So Bottlefish and Evan Rogers, regarding the delay of the higher end MacBook Pro says, this is actually great news because the performance gain using the three nanometer process is gonna be significant. And yes, I didn't mention this in my original video regarding this, but yeah, the delay is not entirely bad news because TSMC could be ready with the three nanometer chips and M2 Max and Pro being based on this could give us major upgrades. And considering these MacBooks won't have redesigns and really any other changes apart from the chip, there should be a focus on the performance and giving us major upgrades. So David says, a new 24 inch iMac could be a press release launch, even just changing the chip will keep up to speeds, leave it too long and it starts to get behind the competition unless they give it a price cut. Now regarding the first point, yes, I could see a press release for this 24 inch iMac because it is ultimately a spec refresh, there is not going to be a design change for this. However, regarding the second point that we could see this iMac fall behind the competition, I don't think that's going to be the case because 
all-in-ones in general aren't very popular in the first place and so windows manufacturers don't update their all-in-ones on a regular basis for example the surface studio which i know is a professional all-in-one machine but of course microsoft only just gave that new specs after not touching it for three to four years i believe and the spec upgrades in the first place are not that major so of course i think the m1's still plenty good and for the small market this imac caters towards m1 is still solid since do remember this imac's purpose is to be a basic computer for the home so the most people are going to do with this is web browsing and watching videos and for that the m1 is still very good and so yeah there's no rush in updating this 24 inch iMac just skip the m2 and give it m3 instead so opus digital audio says the chin needs the logo put back and actually i do kind of agree because i never understood why apple got rid of the logo on the chin yes i know the chin is an iconic design element that makes it instantly recognizable as an imac but i still think it looks pretty odd without a logo on the front and so yes if apple can bring that back with the new models i would appreciate that so chipotle man says damn i was hoping for a redesign i guess i'll keep my m1 mac mini and see what happens just upgraded to the one terabyte 16 gig unified memory version 2 and it's been excellent loads of good deals on them on amazon right now i even saw the two terabyte version for 1700 dollars and yes mac mini deals from third parties have been excellent and yeah to be honest much like the m2 macbook air i do think the m1 model is going to cannibalize sales of the m2 version because there are just so many good deals out there from third parties that are way below retail price since like i discussed in my macbook air videos the m2 version being 11.99 retail and of course the m1 being way below that at around 849 through retailers that does make the m2 version hard to justify especially since the actual upgrades with the m2 chip really are not that major so yeah i do think that's going to be the case with this mac mini because while i'm sure there will not be any price hikes with the m2 version i'm also sure there's going to be major discounts on the m1 version deals that are even better than they are right now so of course that's going to be pretty compelling for most consumers anyways that's about it but tell me your thoughts regarding this in the comments anyways thank you for watching guys make sure to like and subscribe for the latest apple news and rumors check out the video above on details regarding the m2 ipad pro and on that note see ya peeps